our first talk, we've got Sharon and Jeffrey. Um, they're going to be speaking on building an OpenStreetMap community playbook. So um, let's invite them up. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our talk on uh, building an OpenStreetMap community playbook. Uh, I am Sharon Omoza, uh, the Everywhere She Maps Regional Ambassador for Youth Mappers. And I'm also part of the HOT community working group and uh, HOT uh, training working group. Thank you. Yeah, welcome to our session. Uh, my name is Geoffrey uh, Katerega. Um, I work with the humanitarian open map team at our regional hub for Eastern and Southern Africa as the community manager. Uh, but I'm also uh, a member of the OSM community in Uganda. Um, I'm also part of uh, OpenStreetMap Africa, which is a network of uh, OSM communities across Africa. So uh, a big shout out to all members of OSM Africa. Give me a wave. Several of them in the room. Um, yeah, we have several colleagues who couldn't make it because of visa issues, but good to see also a good number of people here uh, represented. Um, so I'm also a member of the HOT community uh, working group. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, like HOT has different working groups. We have the training work group, the tech working group, um, the uh, community working group specifically is one uh, that helps to uh, engage uh, communities. So we uh, do support, we do convene every, um, almost every week. I uh, have like meetings, uh, one in the uh, Africa, Asia time zone, another one for um, like the US time zone. So we have like meetings and people just come together online every week and we have uh, several things we work on. Um, we organize uh, like community webinars um, on different topics. Uh, we uh, invite communities to share about their work. Um, so yeah, if you're interested to know more about the, uh, the hot community working group, and uh, interested also in joining us, uh, you can just visit uh, that link and be able to, um, yeah, to take part and join us. Yeah, so why why a playbook? Um, so there are always uh, different questions that come up um, when trying to either start up a community or if you're a member of a community and you want to, you know, to see how uh, you can kind of grow it. Um, I had this question and this challenge, and I know uh, several people also had the, the same uh, question. Um, and I tried to reach out within the uh, hot community working group. Uh, we have um, a Romeo forum that we used to have community discussion. So yeah, I reached out and asked people for um, you know ideas like, how do you do it in your in your community? Um, how do you overcome uh, some of the challenges that you you face? Where do you find resources? Uh, where do you even uh, start from? So obviously there are uh, several questions. So um, is there a community in your country? So um, you may be here, I, I met someone from, uh, from Ethiopia here and he was telling me, yeah, I didn't know there was an awesome community in my country. Um, but even if it's existing, how do you even find out where, um, how to get in touch, how to participate? And if not, if it's not there, how can you start it? Because there are also some places, some countries where there are no uh, communities at all, uh, or even a local community. You may want to have a, a community in like your city where you can, you know, meet other mappers and uh, do this together. Um, yeah, but if it doesn't doesn't exist. How can you start one? Where do you even start? Um, who do you reach out to? Um, how do you get people interested in OpenStreetMap, especially if you are also new and you're just trying to learn? Um, and what does it take to even start? How do you keep it running? How do you sustain it? Um, we have, uh, we normally hold events and you know, one of the things we do um, at like mapping events, mapping parties, mapathons, we, um, get like some snacks and uh, drinks just to, you know, to keep the uh, event nice, but that needs resources. You need like uh, um, space uh, with maybe internet and, and the table. Where do you get these resources from? Um, do you need to set up, you know, when you get a hundred people 
interested you need to set up governance for your community what is the structure you know um and how do you keep the community uh, engaged so very many uh questions uh but the good thing is that these answers exist somewhere uh, within uh, different communities some people have already gone through these things and they have found solutions but how do we uh, share uh, this knowledge how do we um, share it with people who are just starting or are also facing these uh, same challenges. Thank you, Geoffrey. Yeah, so the idea that we had with the community uh, playbook, we had some impacts that we wanted to achieve with this community playbook. We had so many impacts, but our major, the major impact that we wanted to achieve was sustainability and also diversity in this open street map communities. So with sustainability, we were looking into uh, the OSM communities that exist and, uh, and uh, let's say they are, they are vibrant. How do uh, OSM communities that are starting up learn from the communities that are, that are let me say, that are healthy, that uh, have a lot of things going on from them? And uh, how do you also keep the volunteers, how do you also keep the volunteers engaged? Because what I've seen in some of the communities sometimes uh, the volunteer, sometimes, let's say they, they disappear. So you get to find that you don't have the same, the same people that you had at the beginning. So maybe the number of people in the communities, there is that reduction of, uh, of these people. And for example, the communities that are majorly founded by youth mappers, you get, uh, when the, when the youth mappers get to exist, the universities or the campuses, so most of the time they don't keep in touch with their with their OSM communities, and maybe they there is not someone who can uh, progress the activities that they were doing. So sometimes some of these communities end up dead, or other, others end up like being in a coma, like there is nothing that is happening with these communities. So how do we how do we keep these communities engaged, and how do different communities in their various levels, those that are fully engaged, those are starting up, and uh, those are struggling, how do, how do they learn from each other so that they, uh, they, they, there is that continuity? So the other impact was diversity, diversity in our communities. And uh, one of uh, the major diversity issue was uh, uh, gender representation, uh, because there was some of the, um, uh, some research that was done by the OpenStreetMap, and we realized like most of the contributors on OpenStreetMap, we have two to eight uh, percent of the contributors are, are women. So how do we have women engaged in these OSM communities and even like take up the leadership positions on uh, the various OSM communities that uh, that we have? So those are the major impacts that we want to start with uh, when we are coming up with this playbook for the communities. Uh, so this, um, the community playbook was an idea that uh, came by last year. So the first approach that we did, what, there was that uh, brainstorming on uh, the need for documenting this knowledge and uh, having a resource. And from the Lumio, Lumio forum that uh, we created as the community working group, this is where we had this uh, discussion about the need for the playbook. And then we had to, as the community working group, we do have monthly webinars. So one of the monthly webinars was on uh, tips, tricks, and challenges on uh, building an OSM community. And it's from this webinar that we had uh, various thoughts from different people on some of the challenges the communities are facing, uh, some of the tricks that other people had that uh, sustains them. Uh, so from the webinar, we had a lot of themes, uh, a lot of themes, a lot of tricks, challenges that we got uh, from the webinars. Some of them were promoting data quality. Uh, some of them were training, uh, training, diversity and inclusion, uh, building goals, identifying gaps in the map. So we had a lot of themes that were repeated, but because we were starting, we couldn't get every everything into the playbook so we had to prioritize just a few themes that should first go into the first draft of the of the playbook so we had 15 15 volunteers who who were part of the of the webinar and uh, 
uh, the contributors uh, the contributors prioritized on the most repeated themes and some of the most repeated uh, themes were identifying local community issues uh, how mapping can help others work uh, the other one was at attracting and engaging students uh, connecting contributors motivation to mapping and training so at first we we decided to prioritize on these four themes so that uh, we start with them and uh, we have the first draft of the community playbook uh, but this first approach we had a challenge uh, out of the 15 people that we had that uh, had promised to help uh, in building this community playbook uh, a lot of them dropped out like at some point we had like three out of 15 uh, volunteers who are like uh, uh, getting time to help in drafting the community uh, playbook so some of the four themes what we had was just like an introduction and we reached a point where we came to a stall uh, in january we were supposed to have the first draft of the community playbook but we didn't have anything we just had the introductions from the various themes that we have so we came to an, a stall and uh, we decided to take the second approach uh, first from the first approach what we learned uh, what according to us the community working group what we did right was engaging the communities on the themes that they wanted to go into the playbook uh, because the playbook is for the community it's not for the community working group so it's the community to tell us what is it that you really want to go into the playbook so i think that uh, to us that is what we did right because whatever is going to go into the playbook it's from you the community and uh, what we could could we improve this is kind of like a feedback that we want to hear from you according to our first approach what do we do you think we did wrong and uh, what could we improve on it so that if we was uh, by january we could have had uh, our first draft yeah so this is going to be a feedback from you uh, so the second approach uh, managers from the open mapping hub who came in now to start uh, to write uh, the chapters but there was a conflict that these community man managers from the various open mapping hubs identified. One, uh, they now had to really understand uh, what is what is really a playbook. What to understand what is uh, is it really a playbook? The definition that we had from the beginning is it the same definition that they got? Uh, they have the idea that now they want to they wanted to take uh, a different approach to and then from who and to whom was it for so i'm going to give geoffrey to take over that because he was part of the community ma managers from the hub thank you. yeah thank you sharon um yeah so like sharon has shared we um yeah we faced some challenges on the way uh, but we are still continuing with this work so we've um, from the discussions we have had with uh, uh, several people within the community working group and the wider community um, it is clear that we do want um, a playbook which is from the community and for the community um, and it should be a living tool um, which also can be updated on the way because uh, things change um, we all know for example for uh, the past you know two years we couldn't meet in person so if you had like something and it's planned and it's like you know um, not flexible then you can't really adjust to the existing situation so we think the uh, the playbook should be uh, a living tool uh, that you know gets updated from time to time um, to kind of uh, address the challenges that um, exist so yeah there is need for people to get inspired on how to and get like a rest space. Um, we were yesterday having a discussion um, with the local chapters and communities working group and it's the same you know issues and ideas that we are talking about with the community playbook that were being discussed and people had like very you know wonderful ideas on how they are addressing uh, these challenges. Um, we had from you know uh, OpenStreetMap Italy how it is really working with Wikimedia Italy to uh, address some of these challenges. So things like that where, you know, key partnerships can reduce um, problems or challenges that you, look, you think are very big and they're really, uh, you know, made 
easy and, and, and possible to uh, to solve. So yeah, we really want to engage uh, new people um, and get more people involved in, in open mapping and open street map. And we want to also, uh, you know, capture everyone's uh, knowledge on uh, how they are doing this for their communities. Um, we need to uh, get your ideas um, to be able to participate in this. What do you think would be the uh, best approach to take with this playbook? Um, what do you think are the uh, most important topics? Um, and please uh, take a copy of that uh, small URL. Um, if anyone in this room can share one idea, um, I'm sure uh, this playbook will uh, have very good content that we can use uh, that will be useful for communities. What do you think is the best track structure and format um, for uh, for a playbook? Are there some good examples of community playbooks that have come across uh, from other open source, open data communities uh, that we can learn from as we uh, write one for uh, OpenStreetMap? Um, yeah, and uh, where do you think we can host uh, this playbook and 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 where. So yeah, we want to capture your ideas like you have heard from us. This is still a work in progress, but we want it to be uh, for the community um, and uh, your ideas are really uh, very much uh, welcome. So yeah, that's it from us. Uh, in the uh, final few minutes we have. So um, yeah, thanks for, for listening to us and uh, reach out. Uh, and also participate uh, on the link that I've shared. Thank you. Thank you. I was watching on Venueless and there were lots of hearts going up at different times. So uh, people are watching online as well, as well as here. Um, so we've got some questions here um, and I'm going to go by the voted ones. Um, so what is the minimum number of people needed to start a local OpenStreetMap community? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, what's the minimum number of people? Um, I'm going to just share my personal opinion. Um, I mean, everyone would have a different view, but, and these are some of the things we want in the in the playbook. Uh, for example, I think five people, uh, five people is a good enough number. I've seen communities which are made up of five people initially, and then they just keep on growing. Um, yeah, as well as saying two uh, in Malawi uh, is enough to start a community. So yeah, Sharon, what do you think? Uh, I think um, first it starts as an idea. So the minimum number of, I think it's one. So if you have an idea, <laughs> if you have an idea, you can always like now try to share your idea with other people that are interested. Yeah. So. One person is enough. So if you have the idea, you can now start getting people from your community. Yeah. I'm going to add to that and say one, because a lot of communities start, you just have to find a pub or a cafe to meet in and post that I'm going to meet there. It's helpful if you have a friend, even if they're not in OpenStreetMap, because <laughs> then they'll chat to you if no one turns up. But yeah, one's, <laughs> one's good. Um, so next question. Um, oh yeah, this is a good one. What to do when the community's goals could be reached? Or, or yeah, so when the they've got goals and they get reached, will the group disappear? That sounds horrible. Oh, uh, when they reach their goals? Yeah. What happens? Uh, I will say like. Um, get more goals like <laughs> yeah try to find more goals because i don't think that should be the end there is always a lot of things that is changing around the open street map community around some of the things that we do so at the beginning when you had some specific goals and you get to meet your goals try and find other like maybe challenge yourself higher on some different activities that you like to do and also get to learn from other different communities like what are they doing and what have you not yet done so that you also like work on that yeah so that is not the end when you meet your goals yeah um i, I think uh, maps uh things that are going to just you know like you can never map a place completely and say i'm done i'm done you know 
um, because the things change. Um, you know, there is a building here, maybe in 50 years, there'll be like a road here. So things change and maps need to be updated. And when you look at OpenStreetMap communities, really the main goal is, you know, um, contributing to OpenStreetMap, uh, growing the user base of people who are using OpenStreetMap, building tools on top of OpenStreetMap. So I think as you um, achieve some goals, new goals keep on coming up, like Sharon has said. So we just keep on going and going and going. Um, our job never ends. And also you can recruit more people with different goals. Yeah. 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 Annoyingly, the map's never finished. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll take, is that a question or a response? I'm going to run down here. Thanks, Jeffrey, Sharon. Um, so how do you grow the leadership team? And because I think that's, that's a bigger problem also, because you will eventually get burnt out or have other things to do in your life. She me, but. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one, and I, I think it's a very big one. Uh, um, leadership and, and governance for uh, communities is very important. If uh, you know you are a leader of a community and you are the one who does everything, obviously you are going to burn out. Um, so the best thing is to you know to create a team um, and uh, share roles. Um, you know, there should be someone who, for example, does the communications, uh, you know, someone who engages new mapper, someone who organizes events. So for me, I, I think uh, yeah, leadership is supposed to be kind of a shared thing. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are situations where, you know, you put up like a team to lead the, uh, the community and, you know, see people are not um, <laughs> doing what they're supposed to be doing and you feel like the work is, you know, uh, all going to one person. But that's when you still have to get in, in like new people. Um, yeah, and eventually it will still come to like, you know, structures. Um, yeah, are, are you supposed to put up structures, especially when you want to go uh, up to a stage of like, you know, becoming a local chapter, which is uh, supposed to be an entity that is registered, for example, then you have to get like directors for the, uh, for the organization. Maybe even hire a few people to run uh, things if you have the uh, the capacity to do so. Yeah, I think leadership and governance is uh, a very big one, um, which should really have a, a big place within the uh, the playbook. Uh, but also we have to invest in I think leadership development because yeah, you may have people who are willing, but when they don't have enough uh, skills to do the uh, to do the work. Yeah, I think. Uh... It's a challenge that I'm experiencing in the OpenStreetMap community in Kenya. So I would like to get the answers from you than giving the answers. Yeah. So yeah. I... <laughs> okay. Um, we'll go on to the next question. It's, it might be getting trickier. Um, some countries end up with multiple multiple communities that are not well connected or do not communicate with each other, which can be frustrating. Do you, so I don't know if you've experienced this, but do you have any suggestions on bringing disparate groups together? Yeah, I can go first on that. Um, yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, when when there is an active community in any country, uh, different groups will uh, will come up. Um, but the good thing they're all having, you know, one goal to grow OpenStreetMap. I think that's that's the best thing. Like. Uh, However much there might be different groups, they're all contributing to OpenStreetMap. So for me, I, I think it's healthy to have several groups in a particular country. But then, like I think the question asks, how can these groups collaborate and work together? Um, especially when, for example, they are, uh, there is like maybe a call for grants, uh, and you know they're all competing uh, for the same resources. Um, it can bring also like you know uh, friction between the different groups. Um, I think one good example, like in Uganda, we have uh, 12 youth mappers chapters. Uh, we have uh, also like some organizations that are doing work around OpenStreetMap, but we we try to use uh, OpenStreetMap Uganda as you know the national level uh, you know community that brings all the other uh, groups together. So I think that's like the solution. Uh, these different groups may have like uh, uh, maybe based in different cities and with a national community or chapter, 
it can be like the convener that brings all the other groups together. So I think the national community of chapter has to be structured so that it is open to everyone. It's open to all different groups. Uh, there, has, there can be also something like maybe a membership for organizations that are member of the uh, local chapter, uh, membership for youth mappers chapters, but it has to be really open and inclusive. If there are like barriers to, you know, to entry, then people will not join you. They will see like, yeah, you're having different goals and you're not uh, trying to bring everyone together. Maybe Sharon can also share experience from Kenya. I think uh, for Kenya, we only have one community. So we have organizations that work on uh, uh, OpenStreetMap. Open uh, but what we do, we collaborate on most of the projects. They invite us in most of their projects. And also, we invite them in uh, some of our projects. Because at the end of it, the goal is to uh, have an updated data on Kenya. Uh, on open street map. So I think collaboration is, is key. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So yeah, we're all helping open street map. Um, there's one more question, but it's a quick one. Can you mention the URL for the playbook again? I think maybe if you put it in Twitter or with hashtag SOTM2022, if you do that or someone else probably will beat you to it because we've got a great community. But thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Jeffrey.